Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Uh, my name is Greg Duggan. I'm the Deputy Town Manager for Essex. Um, again, thank you all for coming out here tonight. First off, is there anybody who did not get a keypad polling device when you walked in? Little, little item? Nope. Great. Um, so we're getting towards the end of the public input portion of the firearms ordinance. Uh, to late, tonight's July 19th. Um, the online forum play speak is going to be available until midnight on July 22nd. Uh, tonight's kind of just a, just a check-in to um, sort of show people what the trends have been so far, what we're hearing online, um, some of the feedback that we've gotten. Vet that through the people here. Uh, Jen will run through those pretty soon. We'll use the keypad devices to, to sort of see if what, what we've been hearing is that matches up with what you've been saying, um, matching up some of the concerns, some of the issues that have come up, and go from there. Um, from there, a few more days to, to weigh in via place speak. After that, Jen's going to be working on a report to get to the select board, uh, which they will have in their packets on August 6th is the plan um, to review at that point. And at that point, it's just going to be giving them the information. There will be more opportunities after that to have them digest it, uh, decide if they want to act on anything based on that feedback. Um, but for tonight, uh, yeah, it's a chance to see where we're at, check in, and um, have a few more days after this. So with that, I will turn it over to Jennifer Nauer. Thank you. We might need to turn that one off so there's not. Great. Okay, welcome. I wasn't sure what size of a crowd to expect for tonight. And I do appreciate that you came to sit here because it's awfully hot in this room. <laughs> and I don't think that's true just for me at the front of the room. I know you're feeling it too. We do have the fans turned down a bit to improve the audio quality. And if you end up getting too hot, then about midway through, we'll turn some fans on in the back. Can you hear me okay in the back? Yes, no, you'll let me know. You can just wave if you don't. Okay, good. So my name is Jennifer Nauer. I'm a moderator, mediator, facilitator. I'm here to present the emerging, emerging trends from the public comment process. And I say emerging because it's still happening through midnight on Sunday, July 22nd. So that means that survey results, discussion forums are still active. We haven't done an exhaustive search of all the material that's there yet. But because some of those functions aren't visible to those of you who are viewing that website as a participant, we did want to give you a sense of what's going on there. And if you're not on that website, um, very similar, uh, give you a sense of what's happening there. I've had the pleasure of working with a great crew of town staff, really amazing folk. Greg Duggan, deputy town manager, Darren Shibler, town planner, who is the charts guru in, as far as I'm concerned. Darby Mayville, community relations. Allison Vile, parks and recreation director at the front table. And Lieutenant Ken Boyer, police department. Thank you to Channel 17 for filming this event and also the June 5th forum. I also want to thank the Orton Family Foundation. They're the ones who provided those little keypad uh, for the interactive polling feature this evening. It's an experiment for us. We've not used it yet, so that'll be sort of fun to check out. Also, appreciation for the school and the staff and the campers who had to readjust their activities somewhat so that we could take over this space. Um, and that included moving around the big pile of lost and found and other things that happen in this room when we're not using it. So the objectives are threefold today. Share some emerging trends, give you a sense of what's going on and the results. Where possible, invite feedback where feasible. This is a pretty manageable sized group, which means I should be able to take some comments from the crowd. Also, there's an opportunity at the end of this evening for any Essex residents who are not currently on that Play Speak website and don't plan to be, but still want to participate in the survey. If you stay after this meeting, once the meeting adjourns, then we can get you a chance to fill out that, that survey and participate. So before we move into the data, I have a brief reflection from the mediator seat. <laughs> Every case in my line of work has its ironies. So these are exchanges that catch my attention because people are speaking at their truest and saying the same thing, sometimes even using the very same words from almost every side of the dispute. In this case, it was the question, how will the survey be used? followed by a particular expression of just waiting to see what my answer was going to be. Largely, that's a concern about how survey results are often used. Data, survey data can be used and misused a dozen different ways. 
But mostly what captures my imagination about that question and about that pause, regardless of what side people were on, they were nervous that the survey would be unfavorable to their point of view. Does that sound familiar? It would seem that uh, few of you following this case seem very confident that you share the majority opinion. As this discussion plays out, the results in numerous, you know, this results in numerous negotiation strategies and positioning as this conversation and the decision gets made, and that makes sense, as it should. But I think your hope has been that people do not take this decision lightly. What does the majority think should be done with the use of the firearms ordinance? This is the million dollar question. <laughs> and it's not a question that I'll be able to answer for you today, because although there are thousands of people in Essex, only hundreds have participated in the survey to date. But here's what I see in the more casual margins of the public discussion, and that means that the information booths that we held throughout the summer, there's three of them, or in casual exchanges with folks who are aware of the issue happening, the discussion happening. What I experienced in those conversations, and in those brief conversations, is that for the most part, people are trying to figure it out. Sounds like, really? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the right answer is, and this is complex. Some people say, I've, been on, I've seen both sides, I've been on both sides, and I'm not quite sure what the decision ought to be. That may not be true for a lot of you in the room, because there certainly are plenty of voices who have made their minds up and know very clearly what they'd like to see happen in the ordinance. There is a majority, I think, out there, though, who aren't quite sure and are still trying to figure it out. This is the sort of process that does not result in opinion right away. It's complex. That's exactly what you want people to be doing, is trying to figure it out. But it doesn't always convert to a clear answer, which is why the select board members are charged with further deliberating the topics, like town ordinances, because at some point a decision needs to be proposed and made. Survey or no survey, the report that results from this process was not designed to deliver a recommendation from me, from the town staff, or even from the public who are giving input. It's an input-only process. It's, it is designed to crowdsource information, perspectives, insight that only you can add for the select board members as they do make this decision. We thank you for the time that you invested. I also note that the select board members have a tough job ahead of them in balancing both the opinions that are represented and the variety of public interests that are at play. So back to the survey results. It's not a vote but it is an important piece of information about where those of you who are participating in this process, where you think the ordinance ought to go. At least those who participated in the process. And what I remain curious about are those who didn't and we haven't heard from. So to wrap this up, what you have been doing in this public comment process is increasing the quality of perspective, insight, and information that the select board members have to work with. So let's see how close we are to accu accurately representing that information. Um, for those of you who are still wondering what the survey says, by the way, despite my story here, we will certainly share the results before we leave tonight. Questions so far? An agenda review then, so you can anticipate what kinds of activities you'll be engaged with here at this forum. We'll be sharing summaries of the information gathered on PlaySpeak and using the interactive, I don't have one of those keypads with me, with you, but me, but I see all of you do. Those are interactive polling clickers. So what we, I'll be able to do is ask a couple of questions and then get a quick response uh, of how close we are to capturing this accurately. Because this is a small group, I should be able to then get some corrections via comment for the things that I've missed. Minutes will still be in short supply, so I do request that those input, that contribution is brief and goes right to what you think I've missed, not reiterating some of the points that have already been made, but really trying to pull out the nuances. The meeting adjourns at 8. I've put towards 8.15 because, again, those of you who haven't been able to participate online in the PlaySpeak survey in our Essex residence certainly can participate in a paper survey closing after the close of this meeting. And in order to do that, I think what we'll do is meet around those tables over in that section of the room. All right, so now is the grand experiment to see if the polling begins and if it works. So um, can we turn down the house lights a bit? I don't know what else to call them, the overhead lights, so that there's a better view of the polling. 
Ken, I can't remember where the light switch is. Thanks. All right, you have your clickers? Yeah, <laughs> well, we're just getting started, so you're right in time. Um, here's what I noticed, though, is that I don't have my... There we go. Okay, so let's test out that polling technology. A warm-up question. Are you sitting down? Press A if yes. Press B if no. Darby, how many people do we have in the room who have clickers? Thirty-eight, give or take. All right, I'm going to close the polling. Does every Essex resident who's here have a clicker in their hand, or do you still need one? Everybody's sitting down. Well, not everybody. Four no's, 4% 4 no's. That's what's tricky about these numbers. That's okay, gives us an idea. Let's go to the next question and try it out. You came to talk, not to click. There will be an opportunity to talk at some point, although we do need some feedback. The particular objective for this is to get feedback on how accurate it is that we're ca if we're capturing this information in the right way. And in order to do that, I do need to make sure that your clickers actually work. What time did you arrive? Thirty responses. We'll go with it. Close polling. Oh, 31. Okay, there you go. So it looks like most of you have gotten the idea of how this works. Are there any questions about how your clicker works? Yeah, go ahead. How do I know if the percentages reflect the actual totals of the people who clicked? So what I'm watching, yep, yeah, so what I'm watching is actually not the number of 38, but I'm watching a little corner that's up in the right hand, the number it says responses, and it shows me how many people are participating at that given time. Thank you. So it may be that there comes a question where you don't want to respond or you don't catch the polling in time and it doesn't get counted. Now, generally speaking, I'm not using this as a voting measure. I'm using it as an indication of when I give a description of some of the information that we've called from the public comment period, does it sound accurate to you? Or does it sound like I'm misrepresenting your questions? And when I look at those bars, if I see a big indication that a lot of you are thinking I've missed the point entirely, that's a good signal for me to calm down and try to figure out what am I missing? and get to go to the microphone and get some comments specifically geared to making sure that we get it right. Does that make sense? Okay. Keypad not working, but it is. If you need a new one, I, but I think we're all set. There's a red button that shows up in the keypad, and we'll trade it out. Yeah. For the most part, it should be a little green button that shows up in that upper left-hand corner. Okay, so here are a couple more questions. My assumption was that there are folks who are gonna still be piling in at this time. So these are not the most critical questions in the world, but they're really just getting a sense to get everyone onboarded. We'll go through them really quickly. Did you attend the June 5th forum? Yes or no? A if yes, B if no. Closing polling. No, okay, so there are a bunch of you here who this, for whom this is your first forum. The June 5th forum was geared towards more input. This is geared towards more review. And that's um, Channel 17. Again, thank you for filming that event. And if you want to see the, the, um, what happened there, that link is live on the Play Speak forum. And you can also search Channel 17's website. Have you participated in any of the self-guided tours at Indian Brook, Saxon Hill, or the Blue Zone? A, yes. B, no. C, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, okay, well, let's see, no idea what you're talking about. At least some of you don't have an idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> there are self-guided tours that were set up for those who weren't very familiar with these spaces. There are some examples, if you wanna see them on the table, you're welcome to. They are completely uh, voluntary. The point was to try to give sense of people a sense of the land if they were wondering. There's one for the Saxon Hill area, Indian Brook, and then also a driving tour of the Blue Zone, really because some folks aren't really that familiar with all parts of town. And this conversation is one in which the variances in terrain matter. 
Did you visit any of the pop-up booths? There were three, one at Sand Hill, one at the farmer's market, and another at the town library. I know I saw some of you there. Yes, B, no, I was not interested or available. C, no, I did not know they were happening. Whoops. Interesting. There you go. I thought I'd closed polling already, but no, I was not interested or available, and some of you were. Okay. The pop-up booths, I must say, it was a very interesting way to start to get to know what kinds of questions people had that they weren't willing to post online or come to a public forum and ask. And that was the intent, to provide some information, provide some access to myself or other staff in case there are questions about the process that you just didn't really want to ask in front of everyone else. Playspeak.com, a contentious topic if I ever saw one. <laughs> um, that was the online forum that has interactive maps, discussion forums, and the survey in which to submit input. Whoops, I wonder why this keeps going backwards. Have you visited the PlaySpeak site? A, I'm connected and active. B, I signed up but have not posted yet. C, I visited but did not sign up for an account. And there's a lot of folks there. Over 2,000 independent views is quite a few. I tried to sign up and couldn't, gave up. Or E, I'm not interested in the online forum. There's 23 responses, I'm gonna give another half second to see if we can get that climbing up to 30. All right, I'm gonna close polling. I'm connected and active, okay. Tried to sign up and couldn't. If any of you are in that category, uh, please do come see me. I have caught a couple of mistakes, um, and PlaySpeak has been able to remedy them, but it required that we caught them first. So if you're sitting there in frustration wanting to contribute and not able to, then you can contact either Darren or myself, and we'll make sure that you're logged in before the end of the comment period. For those of you who aren't planning on, on attending PlaySpeak at all and still want to participate, again, we'll catch up with you at the end of this meeting. I have to say, locating myself on this screen and with this mouse is a little confusing. All right. Let's see if I can get away from that podium for a minute. So here is the what the public input public input report will include, which. Um, it's going to be pretty extensive. It will include transcripts of all the discussion forums that have been taking place online. So that's an awful lot of points. If people are looking for nuances, the select board members will be able to read them all. It will also include the survey results. Um, what I'm pulling out of it, though, is not just the information that's there, but a bit of interpretation. Not about whether it, an idea should or shouldn't be included, but making sure that all those ideas are represented in some kind of quick reference so as select boards are looking to make a decision, they can actually see those ideas that you've raised without having to go through an encyclopedia of comments. So that includes a summary of challenges and dilemmas, which I'll share with you in just a minute, um, a quick guide reference for the criteria that people are paying attention to. You'll also see that this evening and be able to uh, add input if you don't see what the criteria is that you're looking at posted there. A list of complementary and alternative options that participants suggested. When this comment period began, it was scripted along those options developed by Chief LaRose. Um, we'll talk about what those were in just a moment. A lot of you found those restrictive or said that an ordinance alone isn't going to be effective. So you have different measures that would either complement or possibly take the place of those options that were originally presented. It's a bit beyond the scope of what was intended for this discussion. Nevertheless, they will be included and listed for consideration. And the survey results. Any questions so far? That list of complementary and, and alternative ideas is really long, so I was trying to figure out a way to, to show that to you tonight, and you would have had to spend a lot of time just looking at the list. Um, but what I'm calling that from are all the discussion forums and even the survey results as we pull them out, so that wherever you happen to post an idea that's an alternative, we can make sure it gets included. Yes, Ben. Uh, does the first one also include the, the notice board stuff? Does the first one also include the notice board? Absolutely it does, yes. Every single engagement function that's on PlaySpeak, and the notice board was a great place for resources, um, gets included. There were letters there, there were comments there. Actually, it was like a smorgasbord of different things. Yep, absolutely. Other questions? 
It might be that when uh, on July 22nd, when these discussion forums can't be added anymore, it, it might be that some of those features disappear from the screen for a little while, but then you'll be able to see it again at the end of the week. It's just while I'm working on it, I don't want people to continue to add, so it might be that they're gone from view just for a brief period of time. Okay, so that's the point. This brings us to the point in the evening. Check our work. What have we missed? Challenges and dilemmas. It's interesting. I thought there was four, but you can only see three here. Um, balancing property rights. Let's see. At the this is a tricky one too. Let me walk again. Somehow it's easier to think when walking. I feel a little bit closer to you. So really central, this was listed on PlaySpeak, it was also something that people talked about in the information booths an awful lot, was a reticence to try to make a decision about private property. Uh, and that's wise, right? Uh, the municipality is always trying to balance the protecting the rights of private property owners as well as public interests for health and safety and other things. So it makes sense this is one of the challenges and dilemmas in this particular topic the ways that this showed up in some of the questions and that people were asking, how to ensure adequate buffers for shared public recreation space, what regions under consideration are privately owned or publicly owned, uh, that question came up an awful lot. I'm not saying there are answers to this, but what I am saying is that there's a continuum of balancing those different interests, and it's tricky. Unintended impacts. A very common question that people had was about um, what impact will the ordinance have on shooting ranges versus hunting? That if what you're trying to figure out is where the discharge of a firearm happens, where shooting happens in the town. Um, if the fear or the concern largely comes from a shooting range but the impact falls on hunting, that that seems a little awry. That was a challenge from this discussion. And actually, honestly, some people were surprised to try to figure out what does that even mean? What can the ordinance actually affect given that Backyard shooting ranges are uh, legislated by statewide entities, not a town entity. Again, I'm not saying there's easy answers to that question, but it's a tension that a lot of you were reckoning with and surfing as you tried to figure out which direction should this ordinance take. Did the third one show up, can you see that? Oh, it's so tiny. So in this corner it says clear criteria. A third challenge or dilemma in this was really trying to figure out what criteria are people going to use to determine where those boundaries go and what the restrictions should be. That's not a new concern. It's, it, I've heard echoes of it in the recommendations from the task force past. Uh, the criteria that people are paying attention to are all listed and you'll get to look at that in just a moment. Again, this process isn't gonna tell the select board which criteria they should or should not be using to make the decision, but it does say here are all the different menu of possibilities that people are thinking about when they try to figure out how to logically make sense of where these boundaries go and what the restrictions should be. Did I already talk about that one? Alternative and complement, oh, I talked about it earlier. Alternative and complementary measures. The premise again here is that the ordinance may be limited in its effectiveness if it's not complemented by a suite of other strategies. And those included things like education and outreach, improved signage, intentional buffers. Those that favored no expansion of the ordinance noted that laws and licensing already exist to discourage or prevent negligent firearm use. And that additional restrictions might have minimal, minimal impact on the negligent dis discharge of a firearm. Whether in concert with an expanded town ordinance or not, public comment from multiple sides of the issue, for, against, and in between, generated a whole suite of options to include cl in increase clarity and efficiency and effectiveness. It's outside the original scope of options under consideration, but these ideas are being considered because I, we'd be remiss if we didn't. Um, I think the select board wanted to hear some of those ideas as well. Questions about any of these? Actually, let me hold that for a minute. Let me see first if I've got this right. If I accurately captured the dilemmas of deciding this ordinance, A, yes, B, no, C, somewhat. Please submit your, your vote. Let's 
Let's see. Interesting. Yes, no, somewhat. So I definitely want to know more about that. What challenges or dilemmas are missing? Again, these are less about the concrete ideas and proposals and more about what kinds of challenges did you not hear in that summary? I am going to be taking notes. And one thing I'd like you to do is to talk into the microphone so that your comments can be recorded for us to refer to after this. So Darren, I'm going to ask if you can actually move this. Um, let's tangle up. There you go. What am I missing? Yeah, go ahead. Over here. It might not reach all the way back to you. Yeah, you might have to step forward. Here, will you talk into the microphone with your name and address, please? Or your street Thad, address? Thad McEwen. I live at 14 Turnberry Ridge, Essex, town of Essex. The way this is coming about is we're not, it's so vague on what, the, what you're trying to do because Chief LaRose had all or nothing. He wanted to stop all firearms. And we haven't talked about that yet. We've just talked about an ordinance. We haven't talked about the areas. We haven't talked about are you trying, do, do people want no firearms at all? So we're sitting back here listening to all this, but we don't even know actually where it's going. Yeah, you're impatient to figure out where are those results going? What do people think about those different options? Or, 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 yep. Yeah, because sure. the big option by Brad LaRose was no firearms at all. Yep. And, and at the beginning, nine years ago, it was more like it was a range problem. Yeah, so let me clarify a bit. So this report doesn't just have a bunch of uh, four challenges and dilemmas, but also has the results that, that have been collected on the discussion forums and the survey. Mostly, the survey is focused on those options that Chief LaRose had outlined. They're on two different categories. One is about geography, three different areas, and then there are four different types of restrictions. We just haven't gotten there yet, but go ahead. And then even, even what we're calling this a firearms ordinance, how can it be an ordinance if you can still have firearms? Well, the, yeah, my shorthand maybe isn't very helpful. So the discharge of firearms ordinance, is that Well, it saying? seems to me like it's more hunting than it is mm -hmm. anything else because you can still, if you have an existing range, you can still shoot, but you can't hunt. So it's not really a firearms, I don't see it as a firearms discharge ordinance. Yeah. I see it as no hunting. Yeah, there's a disconnect between with that language. If it's called discharge of firearms, but it's only affecting... Hunting. Some kind of discharge. Yeah, hunting. Okay. Was there more to your thought? Nope. I've been here, my family has a farm next to the tree nursery. It's 200 acres. My grandfather bought it in 1929. We learned in school how to share and how to coexist. But right now, the people that have the recreational sport of liking, liking to hunt, which doesn't automatically say you're going to discharge a firearm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people that go out and hunt. They're walking their, their gun. They don't actually ever discharge their gun. But we're the ones that are being affected because we're the ones that are going to lose something we love. Yep. Where the other side of it is nobody else is going to lose what they love, hiking, biking, walking their dog. They're, they're, they're not going to lose that. There's no, you know, it's, an, it's a no-win situation for us if we lose it because, yeah, I guess we can go and hike and, and mountain bike and things like that, but we're, it's all or nothing for us. It isn't for the people that want to see this come to an end. So and one of the ways that's shown up, let me see if this captures your concern a bit. I'm going to try it on for, for size to see. One of the ways that's come up in these discussions is... Um, Folks worried about the unintended consequence of a firearms ordinance like this one uh, and being very intentional about why now and what kind of change are people hoping that ordinance will affect. Because, it, as you say, it only applies to some type of shooting, not all types of shooting that are happening in Essex. So if there's a specific concern about shooting, then there, it's possible that a discharge of firearm ordinance isn't going to go the distance. Is that what you're saying? Well, it just seems to me that um, we've, we've coexisted together. I've, I've been in Indian Brook before during muzzleload season, and the people that I've met are really nice, and we follow the rules. Um, there are some people up there that do not live in the town because there's nobody attending the booth that time of year. I, I feel that we've never said, the people that like to participate in, in hunting have never said, hey, we don't want you here. We've coexisted, we've done that. I can understand 
the noise thing, but I, I, let's face it, I think there's a lot more noise with a range than there is with hunting mm -hmm. because you don't always shoot in hunting. So I'm a little concerned because it's gone from, as I repeat, it's gone from the, the, the terrible accident that happened here in the town from a range incident. Mm -hmm. And now the only thing that I can see is the town cannot stop ranges mm -hmm. because of legislation. So guess what? They've decided to stop hunting. And I think it's a totally different thing because the range accident was a range accident. And, and I'm 60 years old and I've been hunting since I was five years old. And I've never seen a death here in the so town. Your, your question is, if, if the concern comes from that accident or from those types, that type of shooting, then your concern is that it's not going to have the consequence or the impact, this ordinance won't have the impact that it needed well, I think it's or changed, needs. It's changed, changed. It's gone from people worrying about a range to now, well, we don't want any hunting because we can't do anything about the ranges. Uh -huh. You're worried about the issue creep of the originally changed, it might have had, think, yeah. And I don't believe it's a firearms issue anymore. Okay. It seems to be a hunting issue. Interesting. Thank you, thank you very much. Yep, no, thank you. I am, here's my sense, this disconnect between the name of the ordinance in terms of discharge of firearm and the actual impact on an activity, which is hunting, not shooting ranges. Um, the ambiguity in that language is problematic. You're also talking about the unintended consequence uh, that you want people to be very careful about making. Um, and there's another concern there that makes this difficult that if, is trying to figure out what is the intent of the ordinance if it started with activity around shooting ranges, whether that's noise or uh, safety, it's crept into impacting other activities where there might not have been a concern before. Other comments? What else have I missed? Yes, go ahead. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Sure. I think I can. Can you say your name and the street, or just street that you're on in Essex? Yep, my name is Bruce Smith. I live at uh, 408 Old Stage Road. It's in the blue zone. So uh, what concerns me about this particular slide is that for me, the primary, my primary concern about the uh, discharge um, ordinance is missing from this slide. And my primary concern is that a freedom and a liberty that I currently enjoy is being proposed to be taken away from me. And I don't see anything about freedom and liberty on that slide. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I happen to live in the, in the area where the, the death, the tragic death occurred. And I don't think anybody here wants to minimize the tragedy, but what I see happening is there's a proposed ordinance to take away a liberty and a freedom that I enjoy as a responsible landowner and gun owner and uh, because of some people who made some poor and reckless decisions that that is impacting my freedom and my constitutional rights under the Second Amendment. And I'm really concerned that that concept is missing from that slide. Yeah, it's a, such a sterile slide for such a very reasonable and, and deep concern. So I'm going to try two things out. One of the ways that that gets captured here is this balance of another piece, of, like for, for example, in the criteria slide, you won't see private property rights as one of the criteria that are listed there. Doesn't mean they're not important in the conversation. It means that it gets that balance of the municipality needs to make between private property rights and public interests is a tricky one. Um, so in this sort of diffuse slide, that's partly where your concern fits. But I think you're sharing, um, another challenge that might show up in this particular report, which is some of those, when you see these things boiled down into negotiation points and criteria, it's, it seems like an abstraction that gets away from what the actual reality is when you're using a piece of land or a piece of property or an activity, um, and it looks like that may be curtailed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, Ben in the back, and then I just would like a show of hands for other folks who might be sitting on a comment so I can allocate time accordingly. Okay, thanks. Ben Bro, 54 Lost Nation Road. Um, I put that it was somewhat right. What I thought was missing was a challenge and dilemma around the subject is facts versus emotion. Mm -hmm. And included in the facts are, you know, laws and constitutional rights also. And that sometimes gets, the emotion takes over 
the facts, including safety facts. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I see that's missing off here. Let me, before you give up the microphone, let me test something out with you. When I go through this report, when I hear the word facts in my mediator brain, I think, well, yeah, there are lots of different facts. Some, and they, people use facts for different reasons. When I actually think about what gets negotiated, it looks more like criteria, boundaries, um, things, things like, not necessarily facts, because people use facts in different ways to make those determinations. So when you talk about using, you know, relying on facts versus emotion, um, laws and legislation are all uh, resources and facts to be taken into account. Correct. Yep. Um, is there something else that I'm missing there? Um, I also think there's a piece on uh, the actual uh, number of the weapons offenses that that uh, was reported by the chief in the report. 42 of them okay. over a five year, that type of thing yep. too. Okay, so compared right. Compared to all other activities that. You are gonna wanna place. pay attention to the criteria slide that we'll get to next and got see it. if those phrases resound with you. Okay. So I've got a comment at the back table and then to this table in the middle in green, go ahead. Hi, Breck Norton, Sand Hill Road. My question is, I'd like to know how many of the select board members are anti-gun? It's a great question. I have no idea how to answer that question. Um, yeah, I can't click that one. So there's the comment in green, and then we can get to you, sir, in the maroon. Comment in the green first, in the back. Did you have a comment? I just can't get the microphone to you, unfortunately, because it's wired. Daniel Stein, uh, Essex Junction. I'm a latecomer to the uh, uh, public sessions. Uh, I am a frequent user of the uh, Indian Brook Park, and I have a concern that as use increases and becomes more dense, and as the population it becomes more dense with ongoing residential development, there are changes, things that were entirely appropriate and not needing regulation back before the modern high density suddenly become, the, the, the game changes because we've allowed through zoning and through consultations, we've allowed for ongoing increase in population density and use of public lands. And I haven't heard anybody decline to accept the increase in their property value that goes along with this mm. development. So here's... The, 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 what's appropriate for high density and what's appropriate for low density in terms of restrictions and uses are different. are different. Yeah, so here's where that shows up in the report. You wouldn't see it on this slide, that's right, but you will see it on the next slide in terms of criteria that you're paying attention to as you make sense of what ordinance, um, what future ordinance should take effect. It's true that you don't see it on this slide yet, but it, it's coming. Well, my concern is I shouldn't have to wear blaze orange year round to use Indian uh -huh. Brook Park. Okay. And if we don't do something to change the regulations, then for my own personal safety and that of my friends and all of the other huge numbers of people who use the park. Yeah, so these are the kinds of concerns that will get uh, collated as part of the, um, any of those comments, like I don't know if you're on play speak or not. I'm not so far. Okay. Any of those comments that you make in the discussion forums, those nuanced stories, the way that you approach this topic, the things you're worried about will get collated. They will. Uh, you won't necessarily see them all in this report, but if that report gets into, if that comment gets into play speak, it will be included in the final transcript. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So there's one more comment before I move on to other slides. Go ahead. And we'll just need to, if you could come up to the microphone. Yes, please. Thanks for waiting. So my name's Andy Doe. I live on Sleepy Hollow Road, 252 Sleepy Hollow. Um, I've tried to be neutral on this, but this is the first meeting that I've come to. It looks like you have a lot there. Are you planning to read it? No, 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 no. Um, so a few comments. Uh, I took the survey last night, and I noticed in the survey that the wording in the survey was sort of biased 
um, towards expanding the protection area. All of the survey questions basically indicated that by expanding the survey area would eliminate the possibility of long range projectiles from entering into the protected zone. And that's simply not true. Because um, before Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein, there was a guy by the name of Isaac Newton, <laughs> who basically developed the concept of impulse and momentum. But basically, everything that goes up comes down. Remember your physics 101 in high school? All right. So every rifle is different. But a typical deer rifle fires with about 3,000 feet per second. So here's, here's my question. Because, because I am short on time, what I really want to know is part of your feedback is that the survey seems the way that the questions are worded are biased towards a certain outcome or another. Is that your concern? No, my concern is that it's not factual. That it's not factual. Right. Oh, okay. That the okay. premise that you could limit a long-term or mid-range mid right. or long-range or short-range is faulty. Right. Okay. I got it. Moving on to the next point that you okay. wanted to make. So this point I want to make, anybody want to guess what the range of the projectile is when you fire at a 45 degree angle from the horizontal? 53 miles. So to think that you're going to be protected by expanding the buffer zone is not true. And the questions in the survey indicated that that was the case, and that's simply not true. Um, so that's, that's the first fact. Um, the second part that was missing in the survey was um, trying to address some process from the town of Essex to regulate uh, shooting ranges. Um, I wanted to know why shooting ranges weren't addressed directly in the survey. I think it would be very possible to regulate a, a shooting range just like a building. Yeah, here's a very, here's an answer that I'll do my best to, to um, summarize it. The ordinance, the survey is, was based on the original options that were presented by Chief LaRose. And here's, there are other pieces of legislation that affect shooting ranges. Town ordinances actually cannot affect shooting ranges, except like an indoor shooting range maybe by zoning if it's placed in a certain area. But a backyard shooting range can't be regulated by a town ordinance. Uh, I think it should be. I think from the safety of the individuals involved, it mm -hmm. definitely should be. Yeah. Shooting ranges need to have approval on the orientation, on the materials of construction, Here's where I'm going to, yep, here's what I'm going to know is your question. So there, one thing that did happen on Place Peak and in the forums, there was a lot of, of comment about what sort of resources are available if you fear this, that a shooting range isn't safe or if you have questions about it. Fish and Wildlife has resources available, technical assistance available. But you're asking about something different, which is how do you address the question of shooting ranges if you're still concerned about it? It's not via this ordinance, at least, um, no. existing shooting ranges. No, but I think the town owes it to the residents to develop a process by which we could assure that the shooting ranges in the town of Essex ah, are okay. safe. So that would be an alternative um, idea. Are you on place speak? Yes. Okay. So a comment that goes that, that submits that question will guarantee, I will make a note here, but it will also guarantee that it gets in that list of alternative and complementary, complementary measures that are suggested. It's not covered in the original scope of this ordinance. Doesn't mean it's not a, bad, not a good idea to right. include. OK? Yep. Yep. Thank you. So uh, the third point I wanted to make is this is sort of biased against hunting. Um, I've been a hunter all my life. I hunt ducks in the fall out on the lake, I, archery season, deer season. Um, I haven't fired a shot in four years. So I don't think the residents of Essex understand that hunting is probably the lowest impact of all shooting that occurs in Essex. Every year I sight in my rifle, it takes about 15 or 18 shots to do that. Um, I have a range on my property. It's constructed correctly. It's oriented correctly. I only use it between noon and 5. Um, I try not to really annoy my neighbors. But when I go into the woods, as most hunters, probably not going to fire a shot. And most hunters walk into the woods several years and never fire a shot. So I know that the town can't regulate hunting. Hunting is regulated by the state. But if the town regulates shooting, that's kind of a part of hunting. Mm -hmm. Difficult to hunt without shooting. Um, so I just wanted to make that comment that 
of all the activities, hunting is probably the lowest impact. The last point I wanted to make is I'm also the trail master for the Essex Snowmobile Club. We have over 120 landowners just in the town of Essex that snowmobile trails go over. And this week, my email was on fire mm -hmm. that landowners are going to close down the trail system if there's changes made to restrict hunting on their own property. And I can clearly understand that. And with 120 landowners, we have to talk to her every year and check out the trails and make sure it's OK. It only takes one to say no. It's a lot. So what you're trying to figure out is what are the cascading effects of making a decision about this ordinance? Well, it's a traditional use. Snowmobiling has been around. The club mm -hmm. has been founded in 1967. Here's what I can note. Um, I'm going to use those words, cascading effects of a decision, if that seems like it resounds with you. Snowboard, snowmobiling is one. There may be others um, as something to be looking for. Right. Well, towards. we groom the trails Yep. You know, twice a week. There's lots of people that like to cross-country ski on our trails. Um, it's a recreational activity. Um, I think the town overall benefits from it. If you look at all the towns in the state of Vermont, we have the most yeah. restaurants that are accessible And you know, I, I, wouldn't I wouldn't argue that now, and I certainly wouldn't argue it right now, but I do want to capture some of those ideas, and you've given me some, of some of the different things that make this conversation difficult and actually probably make an input process like this very difficult because you're not able to negotiate that right now. So it's sort of the moves and counter moves that inevitably happen as this gets decided and enacted or not uh, by various parties going forward. But the input that I can take that you've just offered is this bit about just to be mindful of what are the other consequences of a decision being made for other interests that are related? How do they get linked? And you're asking select board members and residents at large to stay mindful of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to other comments. If we have time at the end, I will come back. And my hope is that some of the other slides will actually start to address some of the things you might be thinking about. I'll find my mouse again. Criteria that participants were paying attention to. I'll read them out loud because I'm not sure if you can see that font in the back. Parcel size, current housing density, future housing density, both where building is liking, likely to happen and there were also comments about where it's just not feasible. Population density per square mile, usage density per square mile, um, per area, like the trails and public spaces, actual rate of accidents to date to substantiate the need for a change versus the difficulty in measuring near miss accidents. There are several different exchanges on PlaySpeak about that. Landscape features per property, game features or opportunities per property, and management control of the deer herd, and therefore all the other nu nu nuisances that follow i.e. ticks, foliage damage, road crossings, et cetera. So my next question is going to see what kind of criteria am I missing? What have you been paying attention to as you figure out where the ordinance is needed? And I'm going to ask you to use your clickers first. How complete is this list of criteria? Very complete. B, complete. C, it's missing nuances. And D, it's missing significant items. Yes. Yeah, so the criteria, the criteria for how you make a decision about where the ordinance should or shouldn't expand based on what criteria. And another way to think about this are what sort of perspectives are people paying attention to? What would motivate them to think that there should be an expansion or there shouldn't be an expansion? Does that make sense? Criteria is one, another one of those funny words. I'm asking for the polling first and then I'll take comments. probably isn't as suspenseful for you as it is for me, but because I'm the one trying to capture it, I really do care about what those numbers look like. And where's the results? Oh, I have to catch them. There they are. Missing significant criteria. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this slide. I want you to think before you add your comment, and first look and see if your criteria is here. And if you do comment, please offer me something that is significantly different from one of these other pieces so that I can make short work of getting this piece. Yes, to the gentleman in blue. You'll need to speak into the microphone so that we can hear you. Well, I think actually the TV needs your microphone, otherwise we won't get the audio. Thanks. Hi, just uh, something that hasn't been mentioned. My name is Igor Polonov. I live on 198 Chapin Road, um, just a little bit down from Chapin Orchard. 
Uh, one of the things that I haven't seen mentioned in this, the, you know, public discussions or even private discussions I had with my friends is uh, pest control. Um, I have friends, neighbors that could not be here tonight. Um, and they're wonderful people. They moved here from Southeast Asia. They raise ducks and chickens. They have raccoons and coyotes come up. Um, they try to control it. Um, sometimes with air guns or friends come over and shoot it with, you know, small caliber guns. But it is an actual problem. We do have coyotes. Um, a lot of people are afraid for their children, etc. And um, even, you know, ducks and geese. I think, you know, I think Ver Vermont is about sustenance agriculture. And I think if people um, need to control coyotes, foxes, you know, whatever, they should have an opportunity to, to discharge a firearm. Yep, so part of the criteria you're paying attention to. And uh, may I mention one more thing? Yeah, well, let relevant. me see if I got this. You're paying attention to different uses, so pest control would be one of those pieces. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to make a small editorial comment. Yes, as, uh, as I walked into here, there was a poster about firearms as charge discussion. Uh, right next to the uh, poster about um, archery classes for kids, um, and as far as I know, in other Vermont towns where discharge is not allowed, they don't even allow people to shoot bows. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was kind of ironic we're having discussion about discharge uh, with a poster right next to there to our community kids practicing <laughs> archery. Thank you. Oh, the ironies never cease, do they? Um, okay, so you have a comment about sort of archery in general, but the most the the most important comment was about the criteria missing around pest control. Other criteria that I'm missing, I'm gonna go first with folks I haven't heard from and then I'll come back to you, providing there's time. Significant criteria I'm missing and I am deeply curious, if you're sitting on a question, I do wanna know, even if you're not sure, it's gonna come out completely articulate for at the first try. Yes, go ahead. Eric Bailey, Wilkinson Drive. Um, I, I think the whole process hasn't been clear to a lot of folks, just judging by their input on Place speak that you know the ordinance is just isn't going to affect the stuff they really want it to affect. So, and what criteria are you paying attention to when you think about the ordinance then? Well, the you know the the state holds primacy over shooting ranges. It's you know that was mm -hmm. it's in law that was made very clear with this with the Supreme Court case of Wilson last year. It's there's it's cut and dry as there's nothing this, you know, this town or board can do to change that. So that means that this ordinance has no effect on the stuff that I've been hearing since, you know, just all the comments I've been seeing is that, you know, they hear all the shooting. Yeah, so what you're looking for them. is some real clarity about what does this ordinance affect. Right, and, okay. and well, for everyone to see, because I understand what it affects. But judging from the comments, a lot of people don't because they're, they keep on talking about, they hear a bang, bang, bang all the time. Well, that's, yep. that's either the army range in Jericho okay. or it's someone's shooting range which is protected by the state that the town can't affect. Mm -hmm. You know, as the previous commenter said, hunters don't shoot. But maybe yeah. once, twice, deer hunters hunt, shoot once or twice every 12 years. It sounds like you're raising a question. It's not necessarily fitting neatly into my little criteria category, it but it is the question about well, the criteria, um, I'm just, what are people responding to? What I'm, are they hoping the ordinance is going to do or not do? Right. Yeah. Just, it's just, they're, they're, it was just missing in the clarity, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then the, as far as criteria, rights. It goes back to the other guy. You know, Article 16 rights in the Const Vermont Constitution are even stronger than the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution that those aren't addressed. And I will consider that a filtering factor that any decision would have to go through vetting through, uh, and sometimes those are legal questions, which again, come back to that criteria that you're paying attention to. So um, thank you, did you have anything else to add? The piece that I'm pulling away from that is really you're paying attention to the, the level of confusion or, the cl or, or clarity around what kind of actual impact an ordinance can affect. Great, we do have time if this is a quick comment. Uh, what I'm paying attention to is my personal economic loss if there was an expansion to the blue zone. Okay. So I have a farm, so I want to echo the idea of using firearms for pest control. Yep. Um, I use my property for uh, shooting, target practice, skeet shooting, and it would decrease the property value if that uh, activity were not able to be done on my property, if I would choose to sell the property. Okay. And my property also... Uh, 
has access to 150 acres of common land with two other lots. And uh, I want the uh, ability to hunt on that, and there is an economic factor there. If it was um, restricted from hunting, then my property value would decrease. Oh, I see. Restrict, yep. Okay, so I'm, that is absolutely, I'm adding this to the list as a criteria you're paying attention to, unique from any of those, personal economic factors or loss, pest control, using property for skeet shooting, et cetera, might decrease the value and also the restriction on hunting yep. availability. Thank you. Thank you. We are getting a little short on time, but if you're sitting on a criteria that I'm missing and it is absolutely unique from anything else you've heard, I do want to hear it. Go ahead, in the back. My name is Chuck Weil. Um, I am referring to usage density uh, criteria. Uh, particularly, let me throw this out, uh, I've had a lot of experience tending Indian Brook conservation area. I'm a wildlife forester by training. That was my career. Uh, when we come to uh, hunting there, we say usage density. I think timing mm -hmm, is okay. the issue. As came out in the uh, committee we had 10 years ago on this, as someone said, we're talking hunting season, you're talking deer season. Yeah, That you, is you, two weeks, three weekends <laughs> of the year. You would take that usage density and you would say, dial that down by seasonal usage and then you'd have something useful. Then okay. I think we should consider that. All right. Okay. Thanks. And there's one more. Go ahead. Uh, yep, it's you in the back. One thing I saw here is landscape features. Yes, landscape features property. are listed. How would you change up or add well, to Well, if depending on what the board decides, right now it's there's some areas that are you cannot shoot a firearm. Mm -hmm. So let's say if we go into some sensitive areas where you can shoot only a shotgun, possibly with bird shot, maybe turkey hunting, things like that, upland game then I think there's some areas right now that are Yeah, that so I'm, are guessing, I'm guessing where you're going. That idea doesn't land on this criteria list, but it does land on the idea for alternative oh, ideas. Oh, because landscape features. Yep, and it won't, it won't be on this list, but it has been okay. brought up in place Cause several I, times. Because yep. I think there's some areas that could be opened back up again. Yes, that idea has been raised and will certainly be included. Yep. So I, you haven't spoken yet, and I do want to know what's on your mind. Go ahead, very quickly. The pressure's on for efficiency, right? Go ahead. Kevin Potasso, it's Lost Nation Road. So one of the things that I've been paying attention to is you talk about public interest or recreation, and it seems like, as, as was mentioned, that it's really turned against hunting. And so you don't think hunting is a recreation. I think everybody that hunts thinks it's a recreation. Mm -hmm. Just like okay. skiing, yep. hiking, Biking, so you're kayaking, looking at fishing. Yep, you're looking for criteria at the array of different recreation activities, making sure the hunting is still in that mix. That's right. Yes. Great. Thanks. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to the next topic because there's other territory I know you want to glimpse at. Am I, how many people am I leaving stranded thinking about something totally unique that you don't see up there yet? Okay. All right, so complementary and alternative measures. This is the area where if I really wanted you to review the list, you would be looking, you'd be sitting here reading for quite a long time. So instead what I'm gonna give you is the categories and some examples of some of the ideas that have been raised. I'm not asking for feedback on these because I think if you have more to add, the place to do it is gonna be Play Speak. Let me just clip to my notes here so that I don't, I can make good use of minutes. Generally speaking, when I see that long list of ideas, I know that someone looking at that long list is going to stop reading about halfway through, so I am trying to clump it into categories. These are the categories I've picked. There may be new ones that emerge as I go through more ideas that they don't fit neatly in these categories. But here are the types of ideas that are coming up. Buffer zones, consider where and when. It goes to the idea of timing. Redraw boundaries to publicly owned land only, perhaps with a buffer. Another idea, create no shooting zones to adequately buffer trail systems used by bikers and hikers as well as near housing developments. There's another idea here that echoes some of what you've said, which is create buffers that make sense according to potential track or projectile of the bullet where it travels to, not simply where it's discharged from. 
Second category, not in any particular order, is education. These are things like public service announcements, increased educational outreach by actual people who are able to talk and engage in conversation. Signage, education. Education to increase awareness about what different signs mean. No trespassing versus no hunting versus what a safety buffer is and can do. Third category, signage. Improving signage to better manage expectations for when and how a different specific piece of land will be used. About seasons, better marking of boundaries, clear and consistent communications of ordinance and boundaries for residents and non-residents alike. And there's another category of ideas around a public shooting range. Um, this idea of establishing a public shooting range in Essex. Different resources to keep in mind that might make that more possible. This is going to be frustrating for those of you who still want to offer input, I know. Um, but I don't have a polling question because there is no way to adequately poll and get good information from you. I will say that if you have ideas that you haven't contributed to Play Speak yet, or if you don't see them represented there as you scroll through those comments, take a moment to add it because it makes it on that list in one way or another. Those transcripts are then included in the report as well as this categorized list. There's my. Okay, quick time check. 737. Not too bad. I'm looking at the town staff to see if I've missed anything critical. And where I'm moving to now is the survey results. Um, and so Darren, that means if you could hold the microphone, you might be helpful and chime in as we interpret some of these. So just hold on for a moment. Um, Oh, you're right, that's all green. Well, that's okay, we can move to this other thing here. So the survey result, it was a little bit of a clunky tool. Originally, at the charge for this public comment period was to get input on the very specific options that were outlined in Chief LaRose's memo. There was one in September 2016 and one in February 2017. Those options were divided in two areas. One, geography, if the ordinance is to expand, where? And there were three specific areas set up. It's hard to see on this map, but from a distance you can kind of see on this one. Um, thank you, Greg. So that orange area is where there's already a no shooting ordinance. That's mostly the village area. The yellow area is the Indian Brook area. That includes properties that are outside of the park as well as the park itself. That little orange spot in the middle is the 500 foot buffer zone that's right around Indian Brook, the reservoir itself. The blue zone is what we're calling the north, north central blue zone. Um, Saxon Hill is that little green corner in the bottom right. Saxon in the forest. White stuff is. Um, White stuff is unrestricted. Is allowed, it's unrestricted, and there's no changes being considered in that area right now. If you're looking for a more complete summary of why those boundaries were chosen, you should look at the the June 5th forum overview. It's the most concrete summary of the rationale. The second option. So it's by geography and then by restriction. What, what should the ordinance restrict, if anything? Ranging from, uh, and you might not be able to see this, but A, keep the curtain and ordinance as is, don't expand. To B, expand the boundary to prohibit long range bullets. C, expanded, expand boundary to prohibit long and mid range bullets. So these are talking about different sorts of discharge. And D, expand boundary to prohibit discharge of a firearm completely. Clear as mud. I know you have an objection to that, and it was still how it was articulated when we first got those options and were charged with getting some input on them. So the survey is built around figuring out where do you think it's reasonable if to expand the ordinance, and if so, what sort of restriction would you put on it? And you don't necessarily have to have the same belief about one area as you have about the other. All of these pieces of land are very different. Some have public trail systems on them, some do not. They look different. They have different terrain. Question of the boundary. Question of the boundary, yes. So you're wondering if that orange boundary goes all the way to 15 to Jericho? Darren, do you have a quick answer to that? I don't think it does. Not quite. It goes, um, goes up to right here, Route 15. Sorry, I can't see it very well, but it comes along like here. It passes through a uh, small area where discharge is allowed in this green piece. Um, right now, discharge is allowed there. That's part of what we're calling the Saxon Hill area, where it's being considered for restrictions. 
So if you haven't taken the survey yet and you're not planning on being on Play Speak, you can look at that map and be more thoughtful about where those restrictions are after this part of the meeting. If you've already taken the survey, I'm going to assume that you've looked at this map before and I'm going to move on to start showing you the results because I know that you're wondering about what they look like. Total respondents for the survey, 149. That's a pretty small group. I will say the survey is still open, and there are some people who are waiting to learn a little more or think about this a little more, bit more before they respond. So this is not conclusive yet. You can't see the colors very well, but this does show where some of those respondents are coming from. Are there questions in the back that I need to know about, or are you all set? Ellie? What's up? This chart is the where did people come from uh, in answering the survey. Here's what's interesting. Uh, PlaySpeak allows us to group different, um, well, how do you say it, different areas so that you know whether someone is living at that place, like at Indian Brook, for example, or in another area in the village. It's useful in separating the data out. For example, could be an interesting data point to say, well, everyone who lived there thought this, but folks who lived out of there thought this, if there was a significant difference. So this is just, yep, where they live, yep, or where their property is. Um, that level of detail I was just talking about, we can dial down for the report, but couldn't for tonight because it actually takes longer than a couple of minutes to digest it and make sense of it. So we stared at it for a while and then couldn't quite figure out how to use this time effectively. Um, but it will be interesting looking at the survey results just to see if there are trends or patterns that exist for where people live and how they responded. Use of Indian Brook area. This is, again, just how people are using that space. It's a less important slide for our purposes tonight, but overall an interesting data point. So Indian Brook option preferences. Darren, do you want to explain what, how this is organized? And then if there are questions, we'll take a few. Sure. Um, so the way this is organized is we looked at all those four options, A, B, C, and D, that Jen talked about a couple of slides ago, from doing nothing, you know, leaving the ordinance as is, to prohibiting certain types of uh, range bullets and all the way to prohibiting discharge completely. So we looked at those options by each geography, Indian Brook area, Saxon Hill area, and the North Central area. Um, so with all, with all of that information together, this is what people, how people responded um, to those options. So for instance, um, option looking at the Indian Brook area for option A, 67 people said they would prefer no change versus uh, 62 people said they would prefer to have it change. Sorry, that's kind of confusing. One person said they were uncertain. 19 people didn't respond to that question. Does that make sense? Does anybody have questions about how that's organized? It's the same format for all of these. Yeah, go ahead. What's your question? How are you verifying the, who these people are? The question just, is, question yeah, the question is how do you verify who people are? Yeah. That's one of the reasons we went with PlaySpeak, just a quick aside, is that in order to participate in the survey, you actually have to be geographically verified. You have to sign up for an account, and then um, that your sign-on information can be kept separate. You can still post anonymously, but the technology ensures that you are falling within the catchment area. That means within the town of Essex. And, well, there might be, <laughs> well, here's, here's the technology. So it does try to prevent trolling, um, swamping of, da of data. There are definitely folks who were turned away from PlaySpeak for trying to get into it, absolutely. That's not stuff that we were doing, but it's set up as part of the PlaySpeak service. Yes, go ahead. Is there a method of verification where people say, you know, I live in Essex, whatever? There is a method of verification, absolutely. Are they, they cross-referencing? Yes, they're cross-referencing several bits of information in order to verify people. Here was the concern. If we just sent out, for example, a survey link that could be sent to lots of different people, we wouldn't be able to rely on the data that it was actually coming from folks in Essex, or even that it wasn't the same person entering 20 different responses. This survey is vetted to the extent that it can be to say that people are who they say they are and are operating from the town, um, that they are able to vote once. It's trying, what it's trying to cross-reference are things like your address, your name, your telephone number. When you, someone gets pushed back, sometimes PlaySpeak could ask us so that we could, you could compare it against the grand list. Other questions about vetting and verification? Is there a plan to sample non-respondents? A plan to sample non-respondents? No. Do you mean why people said undecided in this particular piece? Well, in any survey, 
if only the if you only use the results of the people who yeah. answered the survey. Yeah, the question is a large swath of data, and typical procedure is you take a sample of people who did not respond to see if they're significantly different from the people who different did respond. And there are thousands of people who didn't respond and didn't put input at all in this. Absolutely. So is there a plan to sample some of those people? No, there is not a plan to reach out to folks who aren't participating in the public process. So then your data is not valid. The data that we're actually pulling from this is not necessarily a vote. It's to say folks who, who had an opinion and on these particular pieces, it's just a snapshot of where they were coming from, their assumption. It's not statistically valid. Okay. It's not statistically valid. Yep. The useful, the piece there is that if there wasn't a survey at all or any method of trying to figure out where are all these comments coming from, it would be hard for the select board at a sense, just in a quick way, to say where are the general places of support. One of the interesting things about this of those who did respond is to just indicate that sort of akin to the forum that happened in June 5th, there's not a whole lot of support for those middling options. The people were either on one end or the other end. Again, it's not statistically valid. It's an interesting observation to make about what kinds of options were favored. Okay, other questions about statistics that I may or may not be able to answer or the verification process on PlaySpeak. All right, I'm gonna show you the other results then. Did you have a comment, Darren? Are there any other questions about how the graphs are presented, how the information is presented? The use of the north central area. People could select as many as applied. So you could live there, work there, and walk, bike there, and you could click any of these if you wanted. And here's how it panned out with folks who voted. Um, what sorts of options they favored for that north central region if they chimed in? And there were some who were undecided or left it blank. Looks a little different than the results from Indian Brook. Are there questions about that? I can't tell if the, the sudden sort of quiet in the room is from, oh my gosh, I just don't quite know how to make sense of this, or just thinking it through. It's what? Some of the results are surprising, yeah. Use of the Saxon Hill area. Again, this is just the usage. A lot of people walking, hiking, biking. Fewer people shooting there, hunting there. Uh, what was interesting about the survey is that we did have some people who were misclassified. They might have been actually near the Saxon Hill area, but for whatever reason, PlaySpeak was landing them outside of that region. So, Saxon Hill option preferences, and here's how people valued those who responded, valued the different options as presented. Is there a question in the back about the data you're seeing? Are you surprised by the survey results? A, yes, B, no, C, still calculating. So why isn't that, I keep looking for the stop button. There we go. So half of you aren't that surprised by the results. Others of you are yes surprised or still calculating. <laughs> it is a lot to take in all at once. And it's also likely to change. So at this point, this data was taken yesterday, uh, yesterday at noon. The number of People taking the surveys has not increased that much since then. If you are an Essex resident who chooses to fill out a paper survey after this meeting, your data will get included into the data set that goes here.
To further contribute input, visit www.playspeak.com slash SXVT firearms before midnight on Sunday, July 22nd. If there's something we've missed or misrepresented thus far, please let us know via a post in the forum. That is the best way to make sure that even if I don't capture it in one of those ideas, the select board gets it in a transcript. I am doing my best to try to catch all of those ideas, and there may be things that I misinterpret, so your feedback is really important there. If you are an Essex resident and are not signed into PlaySpeak, you are invited to stay after this meeting to complete a paper survey. We do have a couple questions to ask you, and we'll just meet over here at that table by Greg. Results from the public input process will be summarized and submitted to the select board on Monday, August 6th. Again, like I said, if you look at PlaySpeak after July 22nd and, so for example, the PlaySet map or the notice board is missing, it's just taken down temporarily while I try to decode some of that material there. It will all be archived for read only throughout and available to you at any point beyond today. It won't be taking comment, but you can always view it. Questions? Kevin again, Lost Nation Road. So going back to what the gentleman back here said, uh, from an alternate measure, um, close other recreation activities during deer season. I think that idea is on Play Speak somewhere. You can okay. also always add it. The, um, absolutely, the idea is in there. Yep, Eric. I just add, I guess, I was surprised only by one quarter of the, uh, the survey. The one area where, I mean, the town actually purchased it largely for hunting, and the town plan specifies the need for deer hunting in Indian Brook. It's the only one that is even close. All the rest of them, it's very, very clear. The, the survey results are very much in favor of, of not changing anything. Yeah. It's only, only mildly in favor of not changing anything for Indian Brook, which is the, the hunting area. Yeah, so that comment is also included on Play Speak. Here's where some of the, um, the nuance comes in, that when the select board members make this decision, it's not necessarily a popular vote based on the survey results. It can't be. There's not enough people who chimed in. It's not statistically relevant. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good little snapshot about what people were thinking, but it's not necessarily representative of the whole. So they're also responsible for weighing many different public interests, including the different uses for land, um, the different anticipated uses for land, et cetera. So what you've just mentioned there, the content about there's pieces, your belief that Indian Brook was set aside to reserve, preserve a place for hunting has been uh, represented on Play Speak, so it's in there. Yep. Are there any folks that I haven't heard from yet that are sitting on a comment? Go ahead. Sorry, I can't take the microphone beyond here. Cecilia, I live uh, over by Five Corners. I just was thinking the map is so straight and square, and bullets travel really far. So, I mean, are the neighboring towns also participating in this thing? Uh -huh. Darren, do you want? To, can you give a quick overview of the neighboring ordinances? Um, I don't know if that's fair to ask if it's quick, but go ahead. Sure, sure. Um, so, the neighbor, to answer your first question, the neighboring towns are not participating in this uh, because this is only a decision that, I mean for the most part, affects Essex and Essex residents, but you do make a good point that there are, you know, bullets don't stop at town lines. Um, Williston and Colchester have their own firearms or, uh, ordinances. There's a lot of detail that I'm gonna leave out, but I'll say really quickly that in Williston, the northwest part is a restricted area where there's no uh, rifle allowed, but outside of that, there's no restrictions. Um, and then in Colchester, there's different areas depending on um, what you're using. So there's some areas that are shotgun only, some areas that are no discharge, and so on and so forth. I think it's possible there might be a fuller description too online. Westford and Jericho, have Westford and Jericho do not have restrictions. So is this a very quick comment? Thank you. Uh, Nils Giddens from Whitcomb Meadows Lane. Full disclosure, I was on the firearms uh, uh, discharge ordinance task force some years ago after the, uh, after the tragic uh, accident at the shooting range. 
Um, I guess other full disclosure is I thought that that body I did a did a pretty good job. Um, we were um, um, tasked uh, to spend a fair amount of time and thought, um, heard a lot of different opinions and heard a lot of people from all different uh, walks of life. Um, one of the concepts I think I was missing on your honeycomb slide, I guess would be inertia, whatever comes of this. I hope it's more than what came of that uh, because basically after a fair amount of work, uh, nothing happened for years. Nothing was acted on by the select board. I might add that uh, many of those recommendations had nothing to do with changing boundaries. They had to do with um, education, uh, people knowing where the borders were. Um, and since that time, um, I've had experiences where I've come on uh, against uh, people who've evidently been successful hunters in the Saxon Hill area, as good as admitting they, they bagged it in a restricted area. And, um, and I have a little bit of concern because of the increasing development and density in that area. And so um, basically I'm, I'm hoping that inertia isn't a, a confounding factor of the process. And I hope that um, education, outreach, and simply knowing where people stand could be uh, uh, at least a, a reasonable alternate or complementary measure in this. Thank you. Actually, thank you. <laughs> it is not very easy to convene discussions about this, and I appreciate how much effort that took. Are there any other closing comments before I wrap things up? And I'm, what I'm particularly looking for is if you haven't spoken yet, yes, please. Thank you. I just came here to learn everybody's perspective. I'm new to Saxon Hill area. We moved there about a year ago. Um, and I guess I'm trying to learn. It sounds like hunters feel like these ordinances won't help people. They don't follow the rules anyway. And so I'm just trying to gauge, because I know that we have a common area around our yard where we post signs for no hunting, and people just take them down, and we found a tree stand where that is. So I guess, and there is a bullet lodge in someone's house up there who has kids. And so I'm, I'm guessing, do people feel like this ordinance won't help the people that are following the rules anyway? And there will always be some people out there that don't, and you can't do anything about it? You're wondering about what impact would a new ordinance actually have in, in the follow through on the ground. And I, I can answer that question. We could potentially poll it and still not have an answer to that question. Uh, I don't know if there's any recourse. I see your hands, but I'm not going to take those comments yet, except for anyone I haven't heard from. Ken, did you have anything you wanted to add to that comment? No? You don't have to, but. Just the difficulty in. Um, enforcing any ordinance. So if, if for example, t signs are torn down or just not observed, what the recourse is and if an ordinance like this is likely to have any impact. Do you have an enforcement take on that? You need to use the microphone so that... Here, Ken. Sorry. Signs being torn down and things of that nature. Um, the posted signs are to be registered with the town and that sort of thing. So if you have problems with your signs coming down, um, if you have problems with the sides coming down, notify the police department. We'll come up there and you know do what we can. But understand that it's not an easy thing to enforce because you know there's really not a lot of evidence to go on unless you've got trail cameras and that sort of thing, and we can actually get a picture and maybe identify who the, uh, the perpetrator is. Um, the other thing you can do is you can contact Fish and Game and ask them to patrol your area on occasion. Uh, let them know that you have uh, safety zones and or posted signs up. And when the warden's available or when he's in the area, he, you know, he or she will come along and they'll patrol your area at, you know, at your leisure or at uh, your request. Okay, so if you're having problems with poaching or you're having problems with people trespassing on your land, the, uh, the wardens will come out, especially during deer season, and try to enforce that. Okay. What both those last comments point to is the suite of complementary or alternative measures that might actually make an ordinance more effective. So anybody else who hasn't spoken yet, because we're short on time, even if it's relevant, I'm looking for voices that haven't spoken yet because we have, because we are short on time. So I see one hand that I, otherwise, who else hasn't spoken and has a comment? Quick show. 
Uh, Dave Zeneker, Essex Junction, Vermont. Obviously, the select board is paying attention to all this stuff that's going on. Have there been site visits by those members, and are those visits being recorded? I'd like to know how much they're involved in this process to date. Second question refers to the police department. We have a new police chief. This study was done by Brad LaRose. He's now retired. How long, Ken? Okay, so where does the new chief stand on the issues and the boundaries, and can they enforce it? Has anybody questioned that? So I have two answers for that question. So one, um, gosh, where's my board? Select board involvement. This, at this, during this process, the select board, we've asked them to observe only. So I don't know about the, the different tours. Any kinds of requests, um, it's all available to them. What they choose to do with it or not do with it is completely up to them and between them and, and constituents, such as yourself. I, I don't know if they are visiting. You can, it's fair to ask the question, but I don't have that kind of answer. Uh, so nothing there yet. Um, in terms of asking what the current police chief feels about these options, the options, the select board has charged us with getting public input on those options. As part of this process, once this wraps up, I am just quickly surveying the different town departments to see what kind of criteria are you paying attention to or keeping in mind as this gets deliberated. It's not a vote about whether they favor it or not, but it's just a check-in because each of those departments has a different lens that they're watching as they try to make responsible decisions on behalf of the town. So that input will get in there. It's a much longer process in terms of vetting it through. Uh, you really have a comment that you want to share. How quick is it? Thank you in reply to this latest question. Yeah. You know, first of all, talking about being unenforceable, you know, we have laws against heroin use, we have laws against a lot of things. You know, if people are breaking laws, that's up to the police to enforce it. It's not really up to the town to say how enforceable it is. But just in terms of game warden, I've spoken to game wardens and multiple of my friends and supporters have. Game wardens will not enforce a discharge ordinance. They will enforce poaching. So if somebody's trying to kill a deer out of season, they will, but they're not gonna enforce a discharge ordinance. That comes straight from game warden's office. Just so we're clear on that. It does, does raise a lot of questions, doesn't it, about what kind of ordinances uh, take effect in, <laughs> what can an ordinance do or not do, and then what are the different enforcement parties, and then even what are the different supporting parties for any kind of change that takes effect. It is complex. And because of that complexity, that may be partly why it's so hard to get some very informed quality public opinion on this, because there are a lot of things to be trying to figure out. I do thank you for your time. I have a couple of logistical things that I want to make sure that I follow before I let you go. So I'm going to wander back over to my cheat sheet. Again, Place Speak closes for comment on midnight on July 22nd, that's Sunday. We will be compiling a report resulting from this process, and that's available on August 6th at the select board meeting. Um, I, just a quick show of hands, all clickers aside. Raise your hand if this statement applies to you. How many of you have found a little more clarity about what you think about the ordinance? How about a little more confusion? Uh, how about a little more confusion about what you think about the ordinance? I asked if there was any more clarity on the ordinance. Not very many hands went up, so then I asked if there was a lot of confusion, and not many hands went up. <laughs> it might be that you came in knowing and believing the same thing that you're walking out with. Um, how many of you have learned something new about the land in Essex as part of this public process? How about the use of technology? How about various civic en engagement platforms? Wow, not a whole lot of new, huh? How many of you have learned something new about each other? Of course you have. You couldn't have sat here and not. Um, we have learned immensely on all fronts, as myself and speaking on behalf of the town committee, and I thank you very much for your efforts and your input and your time. At this point, we are gonna officially close this part of the meeting. If you are interested in taking that paper survey, please meet us over at this table. Thank you very much. Oh, there, and their evaluations, true. If you do have the time to leave us some input about what worked, what didn't, we want to know. Those evaluations go in the box at the table.